How much does virtual reality, augmented reality, be bring to bear your future analysis and thesis on gaming? Well, I think it's great that Apple is getting into the game. You know, they are the best when it comes to computing hardware. So for gaming, this could be a Palm Pilot to iPhone moment. You know, for gaming, the iPhone was a critical catalyst for that industry. So I think it's going to be really exciting to see what developers do with this new device and, you know, what venture outcomes and opportunities could be there. Ultimately, you think about the gamification of everything. So how much is VR, AR going to end up being the way in which we work? How much does that become gamified? How much does our finances become gamified? I mean, already you're thinking about the gamification of, of many of these sorts of areas. Yeah, I mean, so at Patreon, we invest in what we call the spectrum of play. So on one end, you know, that's actual game studios. And then on the other end, that's game-like experiences. For example, Kudos, which is a smart wallet, which is gamifying the shopping experience. Or Tonic, which is helping musicians practice in a more game-like way with a virtual studio, with avatars. So I think if Apple can solve the form function problems, and honestly, just the comfort of having a device on for that mm. long, there are going to be a lot of opportunities for this generation to be continuing to live and play in virtual worlds. I mean, you can't forget that half of U.S. kids play Roblox every single day. So I think for a new generation of consumers, it's not, it doesn't feel like gaming. This is just where they hang out with their friends. And it's interesting that when we were previously thinking about Web3 avatars and we were thinking about gamification, many would put meta there. Ultimately, how much does VR and AR de or Web3 depend on VR, AR becoming reality or not really from your perspective? I, I don't think the two are intertwined. I think that, you know, particularly what I learned in my book is that while technology evolves, some of the fundamental challenges still remain the same. So I think what we're looking at is founders who are building with whether that is blockchain, whether it is uh, AR, VR, whether it's AI, you know, we want sustainable businesses and founders who are going to think about the challenges alongside the opportunities. Okay, how many of those founders are currently seeing opportunities in artificial intelligence in your world? How are you able to sort the wheat from the chaff there? I, I mean, I think it is impossible to ignore. If you are a founder today, you have to embrace the fact that this is a huge landscape shift and presents a, a huge amount of opportunity. I think that uh, in gameplay specifically, you know, AI for NPCs, world creation, there's so much that can accelerate the founder journey there. Um, so we're, we're excited about uh, the portfolio companies that are experimenting across the board with how this will help them accelerate their roadmap, roadmap and also allow players to have a more sort of interactive, personalized experience. When you're looking to write checks and you're in seed in a very early sort of stage, sort of one person with an idea, helping them build that around that, I understand. Is it competitive out there at the moment? Are lots of checks still being written? What sort of valuations are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, look, I think this is a great time to build. You know, when, when economic times are tough, some of the best companies get built. So we're seeing a lot of very, very interesting talent coming out of companies across Silicon Valley who are looking to ride this AI, AI wave. Um, but, but also just realize that uh, where we sit as patron is in, in between, you know, gaming, consumer culture. And it's so difficult to ignore that gaming has such a fundamental impact on culture broadly. So I think we're seeing a lot of exciting talent come out of, you know, bigger companies across the board who are looking to take advantage of this opportunity in the environment right now. Hmm. What's interesting, of course, about your journey is you were a founder, YC Combinator, um, and then came out and was what your company, Zypo, was bought by Discord. How are, you, how are you thinking about the landscape of ultimately companies either being bought at an early stage or whether we can see companies that we're currently hoping, like a Discord, to eventually go public, even though you have to wait that little bit longer? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everyone's waiting for the, the IPO market to pick back up, and that could be towards the end of this year. But I think, you know, M&A activity is still very, very vibrant right now. Um, but I, I think, you know, the challenges with virtual worlds and online communities remain the same. You know, you're thinking about moderation. You're thinking about, you know, mm -hmm. the tremendous scale that you need to truly monetize with ads. Uh, moderation. So I think there's still, uh, despite technology evolving in this sort of mixed reality world, there are still fundamental challenges um, mm. ahead.